Uh, <coughs> this is a collaboration between the University of Stuttgart and the University of Pisa. And yeah, it's cool. So, as I was mentioning, for example, Claudius is a great magician but not very good cloud practitioner. He learns that some sort of practice on site. And yeah, well, let's, let's capture and organize the sessions and presentations we want to attend. Uh, for that reason, let's develop a two weeks application. That is, yeah, it's Java application connected to the OnroadDB and keep track of two weeks this way. What well, we already see, and from the <coughs> previously, we have different kinds of stack options. We have general purpose components such as Java and time environment, the OnroadDB version. The operating system and the container engine, or wherever we want to host this, we of course have the application specific components, which is a Java application or the collection, which is not really component, but still it's a specific collection to store to, uh, to, to do items. And well, how should we host it? Let's ask the Magic Crystal. And we searching for the hosting option. We have many different kinds of options. We can host it on premises. Use parallel cloud offerings, infrastructure as a service, container as a service, platform as a service, whatever as a service. And obviously, different kinds of models incur different management efforts or requirements of how and who manages what. So, the questions are uh, which general purpose components are preferred, who sets these general purpose components up, and who is responsible for defining the infrastructure, resources, scaling rules. And management requirements may also differ within the same cloud service model. For example, the Elastic Container Service uh, from Amazon it uh, provides two different pricing models. So we have pricing based on EC2, uh, where we need to actually choose the type and flavor of virtual machines we want to use. And we also have Fargate option, which is more a serverless style of where we just pick containers and they are scaled by providers. We define those containers in terms of virtual resources. We say, okay, this is an amount the unit, and then we just uh, rely on providers to run these containers for us. And the management efforts also may be similar for different cloud service models, so giving uh, deployment stack management for bare metal clouds and infrastructure as a service, and we are responsible basically for managing the entire stack. And the scaling configuration could be uh, similar as we just saw for containers as a service and function as a service because we need far gate and post containers there, which kind of are similar to the way we can post functions on AWS Lambda and they are scaled by providers. Uh, so yeah, Magic Crystal gives us an internal server error and if no cloud use is yeah in shambles, if only there was something to come about it with this decision making process. Luckily we have patterns as was uh, presented nicely by Johanna yesterday. Uh, they described these are nuggets of advice, described the uh, solutions to the current problems and specific Contents. They are documented in an abstract way, but at the same time, they have a very clear structure and they are easy to follow. They are not invented, they are captured, and they intend to help us to simplify the architectural decision making. This a, these are examples of patterns from cloud computing patterns, where we have block storage and infrastructure as a service, and even if a person is not familiar with the pattern, the structure is easy to follow, where we have the problem definition, the context where the problem occurs, the solution typically provided with the solution stage. And of course, we also have related patterns which are, which are interconnected. So the pattern is interconnected with possibly other pattern languages to enable this composite pattern solutions where we can combine many patterns together. And yeah, this leads us to component hosting and management pattern language. Uh, <coughs> essentially, we already see that there is a spectrum directly from cloud service models, uh, leaving us from fully managed options to provider managed options. So we have this uh, we, we have this spectrum of different hosting trade-offs directly in cloud service models. And some of those are documented as patterns as well. <coughs> cloud computing patterns for example. The problem is again uh, the different cloud service models may have overlaps and they could provide similar hosting experience. So when we pick infrastructure as a service or parental cloud or on-premises, we are essentially responsible for managing the entire stack and deciding who is going to scale, how, how it's going to be scaled. We also have scaling configuration requirements that could be different within the same uh, cloud service models where we have seen the different pricing options for 
uh, containers as service offerings, for example. Platform as a service offerings also sometimes blend the boundary between who manages what or provide different options. And yeah, terms like serverless all, also contribute to this chaos because we speak about different cloud service models together, fully managed by providers, and at the same time, the fast platforms could be also hosted on premises. So we have this, uh, in, in, in the previous work, we, we tried to look at it from the perspective of two dimensions, where we have a deployment stack management dimension and a scaling configuration management dimension, and we try to align such hosting trade-offs uh, from, from most managed by cloud consumers, a server who host hosting, which combines consumer managed scaling configuration and the consumer managed deployment, so the customizable deployment stack. And of course, going to the serverless, where we have also container options, where we can partially customize the environment our component runs in, we can define what runs within the container image, and we can also have uh, options where we pick the predefined stack from the provider list of options, but we still can define certain scaling rules for these options. So this was the idea, and in this work we essentially moved on, and we tried to also capture these more abstract decisions which, are, which were implicitly encoded in those patterns. So essentially when we talk about each dimension separately, we talk about customizability of the deployment stack, whether it is customizable or fixed, and also the scaling configuration, whether it's provider managed or consumer managed. And uh, this leads us to, to this different conflicting options of patterns. So we have customizable deployment stack which intends to solve the problem where we actually have specific customization requirements for hosting and deployment. And to actually, as a solution, we, we need to choose the deployment stack which supports customizability of the stack. So we can actually enhance it by setting up new components there, defining configurations. And in terms of known users, of course, we have many, many options from infrastructure as a service and parallel cloud, but we also have Kubernetes-based solutions as well as uh, container-based solutions, even serverless container solutions where we pick uh, a container and customize it the way we want and run it still in a serverless fashion. This is also actually available in some fast platforms where we can directly pose a container image. Well, if the solution stage, okay, so we have an application with two components and then we just decide on which option we want to use in the sense of whether we pick the operating system so we host it on a virtual machine or we pick containers and containerize our uh, components by customizing most of the images. And as it's opposite variant, we have a fixed deployment stack pattern where essentially we don't have any customization requirements for the component and we want to host it with minimal effort. So we essentially we just look for picking a predefined stack, providing our artifact and it runs. And yeah, as a solution we pick a deployment stack that, that enables us just picking a predefined option. And here we have variants from platform as a service, we have uh, function as a service options, we have many databases as a service offerings where we pick a database of specific version and we don't need to really configure it, we just use it. And then <coughs> And as a solution, we then would lean more into these uh, predefined stack options, where, whereas they can still support different kinds of scaling configuration. So we can define either provider managed or scaling or consumer managed scaling on top of that. And this goes also to the separate deck, to the second dimension, to the scaling configuration management, where we also have similar options. We want to manage uh, scaling configuration in the sense of defining infrastructure resources where our application runs, as well as uh, defining scaling rules for those components. And essentially, uh, in this case, we want to have it more custom tailored for us. So we will pick a, set, a specific amount of VMs, and we want to say, okay, they should be scaled this way. So, and as a solution, uh, we, we need to choose a stack that supports such kind of customizability of, of configuration. Obviously, this again leads us to more custom, more manageable, more managed versions of, of, of services such as infrastructure service or bare level clouds, container based orchestrators, where sometimes we define the size of the cluster compared to, to more serverless offerings like Fargate. And uh, essentially, what this leads us to, for example, in the case of Amazon services, we pick a bin stock where we actually select the amount and the labor of virtual machines they would run our application, 
and define the scaling rules. Um, whereas the, for database, we can pick a database service offering as a service offering, which enables us to define the instances, the amount of uh, machines that we run the database, for example, and which is different for, for databases such as Dynamo, where we just pick a database and, and just use it without really knowing what's happening behind it. And as a top of it, of course, we have provider managed scaling configuration where we essentially just rely on the provider and how this happens. So we pick a stack that does not require us to define what are the infrastructure resources and how they should be scaled. And of course, plenty of fast platforms started this trend uh, when it was uh, when it gets to compute resources, but also many databases uh, such as AWS S3, for example, or Azure Blob Storage, which are essentially not re they don't require you to, to think about the infrastructure and the scaling rules. So picking our application again, we we host it on a provider managed scaling infrastructure uh, on the on the stacks that support such uh, provider managed scaling configuration. And this essentially led us to to a small pattern language because these more abstract patterns. They, they essentially re they can be refined with this more precise component hosting patterns, which combine these two trade-offs. So uh, enabling us to, to choose from both dimensions, and, and this leads us to specific hosting options. And the idea was to use these pattern relations uh, to support the decision-making when we want to combine different kinds of requirements for hosting components. So as an example, we pick an application, different kinds of application components, and we model our requirements using patterns representing such management decisions. So we, for example, we pick a Java application and we host it on a fixed stack. So it means that we don't really have any specific configuration requirements. And we also don't want to scale many or care about scale, many scaling. And then following the pattern relations, these two com the combination of these patterns is refined into the serverless pattern. And from here, we can actually go into concrete stacks, so different options, showing us actually the stacks that implement such a pattern. And I will get to that in the next slide, how it happens. So the overall process is that we, we choose a component when we do deployment only. We, we, we decide on the requirements with different dimensions, how, how customizable the stack should be, and as well as the scale configuration. We annotate the components or associate them with the patterns. Uh, first, we then refine them into, into these more concrete hosting patterns but based on the higher level decisions. And then we refine this into concrete options. And here we leverage the, the pattern refinement approach uh, by a colleague of mine, Arsenal Rivas. Uh, he was also here in the paper. And the overall idea is that the so the technique is based on graphics and morphism, and the idea is that we have a repository defining detectors and refinement structures for our deployment models. So we have a combination of a component, an abstract uh, node, annotated with patterns, and this, for example, can be refined into the same component but with a more precise pattern. And here we have two different kinds of refinement models. So we, we first of all, we transition using the pattern language relations only. So we annotate with abstract requirements and then we move on to more concrete hosting requirements. And when we move to the to actual concrete deployable stacks, we transition by means of uh, yeah, the repository of, uh, of possible stacks that implement the pattern we want. And essentially when we do the deployment modeling, we can deploy this approach from uh, enabling us to move from abstract decisions to the actual concrete deployment options. So there is also a demo uh, using the Eclipse binary. Uh, yeah, you can scan it. But at the same time, we are also in the session, so I'm happy to answer your questions and uh, see you in the poster session. And of course, now we can Thank you. Different, but really different, did you find so far? 
through this process. And by very different ways of it. Not only one parameter, a little bit different mm. from one to two of the others. Well, no, at this moment, I, I would say we, we were thinking about it only from the perspective of these two dimensions. So, uh, what we, when we got with this first set of patterns, we also got uh, comments on maybe you should look also into costs. Costs are, of course, the cost models, they also are influenced by the way the scale configuration works, right? So, uh, to, to a certain extent, this is also embedded there, but yeah, I think that there should be more. And this is one of the directions I actually forgot to mention. It. These patterns are never finished, and what we intend to do, of course, to refine and evolve the language and, and try to uh, identify more options to, to make this more flexible decision making process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.